What's up everybody? I'm Bill. Come with me today when we start building my dream Amiga 1200 by taking an old Amiga 1200 and putting it into a new case. Welcome to my first video in the series about building my dream Amiga 1200. What is my dream Amiga 1200? I mean, it could be a variety of different things. In this particular case, it's going to be this newly recapped PAL Amiga 1200 from Retrobench.com migrated into this new CD32 style case and keycaps from A1200.net. Once I get the machine into the case, I'm going to replace the Kickstart ROMs. Right now there's 3.0 in there, I'm going to upgrade it to 3.1.4. I'm also going to change out the, the hard drive, put in a compact flash to ID hard drive solution. I'm going to put a Warp 1260 accelerator inside of it. Now the Warp 1260 is not available yet, so I'll document that when, whenever I get it. Who knows when that will be, but for now I'll use my ACA 1233N. Alright, let's get started. Alright, step one in this process is going to be opening up my old 1200 pulling out the keyboard, pulling out the floppy drive, and pulling out the motherboard, and migrating it over into the case. Now, when I got this Amiga 1200 from Retrobench.com, I told, told them, I was like, dude, give me like a 1200 that's got the, the shattiest case and keycaps that you have, because I want to move it into this, this new 1200. So that's what he did. He did an amazing job of doing the recap, and I'm super excited to have this, this PAL 1200. Now, the CD32 colored case and keycaps from A1200.net is, is gorgeous. There's some really cool new features to this case. I know it's weird that a case has features, but believe it or not, this one does. Uh, old cases like this one, as you can see, they start to yellow because of the flame retardant material that was used in it. The new cases, uh, they have flame retardant material, but it's not the kind of material that will yellow. One of the key features to this case that I really, really love are these inserts for the screws. They make so much sense. In the old case, the screws would go directly into the plastic and, you know, they could get stripped, they could damage the case, these inserts are a really, really nice, elegant way to, uh, to attach to your case. They also got rid of these annoying snaps that are on the back of the original case. Every time I used to take the, the, the top off my 1200, I hear that snap, and I'd just be like afraid the whole thing is going gonna, is gonna to crack and fall apart. We also see that there's a bunch of signatures of folks who are on the original design team and other legendary Commodore folks. Uh, we've got Dale Luck, Dave Haney, Dave Needle, David Pleasance, Ron Nicholson, and RJ Michael. Another really nice feature of this case is that the trap door has got ventilation on it. And that's going to be really nice when I put my Warp 1260 inside of it. All right, let's get started here. I'm going to start opening up this old 1200. First thing we're going to do is unscrew the screws. Now there's three screws here along the bottom. You've got one, two on the sides. Now this one here is connecting to the motherboard, so normally when you open your 1200 case, you wouldn't unscrew this one, but today we are going to unscrew it because we want to take that motherboard out. And then we've got two more screws up here on the top that we'll take out. Here we go. And the first thing I want to do is release the keyboard connector. And like Anthony showed us in the last video, this is a zero insertion force connector. So I'm just going to grab it by the two sides and release the ribbon cable. There are cables for the LED lights and there's cables for the floppy drive. I find it always helpful to take a cell phone picture before you take something apart. So it's easy to figure out how to put it all back together. All right, first I'm taking off the LED connector and you can see it's got a plastic slug in there and that's actually really helpful so you can only put it on one way. Taking off the floppy drive cable, take out the screw holding in the floppy drive. And now it's time to actually take out the motherboard, super super exciting. So uh, there's a screw here on the top holding it in and there's a screw on the bottom. So I'm going to start with this screw on the top, flip it over take out the screw on the bottom. And now it's time to pop out the motherboard. Whew. Yeah! Free, baby! Here it is, my beautifully recapped Amiga 1200. You can't forget to take out the LEDs. Alright, time to pop in the motherboard. 
Super, super stoked. I'm a little sad to cover up those signatures though, but it's nice to know they're there. Yeah, sweet. Oh, this looks amazing already. That's really cool, a1200.net also supplies you with a floppy drive button to match the color of your case. But it looks like the floppy drive I've got here uses a different type of button than the one that I got with the case. So I'm gonna have to table, <laughs> table this and uh, try and figure out how to get a, a gray button onto this floppy drive. It's probably a different type of floppy drive. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm gonna research it and get back to you guys. Now I'll attach the floppy power cable. Can't forget the LEDs. LED one is the power, and that goes at the bottom, that is closest to the keyboard. LED three is for the hard drive, and that goes at the top, closest to the heat vents. Next thing I wanna do is upgrade the Amiga Kickstart ROMs. Now, Kickstart is located on these two ROM chips right here, sort of in the center of, of the machine. So the Amiga 1200 has got a 42-pin EEPROM socket, but the actual Kickstart ROMs are only 40 pin, and they go into the socket right justified, so it leaves the left two sockets open. Also notice that there's two notches on the left side of the Kickstart ROMs, and you want to make sure that they are pointing towards the PC MCIA port. So to pop out these ROM chips, I'm going to use this chip puller tool. If the chips are tight and you need to like prime out, I would use an orange wood stick versus a precision screwdriver because you have to be careful that you don't want to scratch the motherboard with the screwdriver. Support the motherboard with my fingers. All right, first chip coming out. Next one coming out. Here are the new Kickstart ROMs. I got them from Amiga on the Lake in upstate New York. It's version 314. You can see there's two of them, one labeled high, one labeled low. Weird that the low goes in the upper slot, but hey, I don't make the rules, I just follow them. Next step is I'm gonna put in my compact flash to IDE adapter that I got from Retro Ready One. If you want more information about this piece of kit, please see our other video. I'll link to it in the description of this one. This is the Amiga's IDE port over here. So I'm just gonna take the adapter and place it on here. I'm not gonna put a compact flash card in just yet. Whenever I do these builds, I like to take it one step at a time. And my first step is just to turn on the machine and make sure it boots up into the kickstart. All right, now it's time to replace all the keycaps on the keyboard. I'm not gonna go into great detail about this process because I already made an entire video about it. I'll put a link to that video in the description of this one. So overall, the experience went much better than I thought. It took about an hour and a half to two hours. It would have taken less if I wasn't shooting the video as well. I was debating about whether or not I should take all the keys off at one time and then put them all back on, but I decided to kind of do it in groups, like do it one line at a time, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with that way. The trick is to like leave enough room around the keys that have the stabilizers in it, because when you put the stabilizer back in, you need enough space to, to sneak it in and clip it in. So that was a little tricky. There was a few instances where I probably could have left a little bit more space, but overall the process went real well. Oh man, this keyboard looks amazing. That is awesome. I'm gonna connect the ZIF connector. I make sure that the tabs are pulled fully up on the connector. I put the cable into the connector, pull it fully in, and then I push down on the tabs and make it snap into place. Our LEDs are installed, and I'm gonna attach it. And again, it's got the plastic insert there, so it's notched out. So there's only one way you can put this in, which is a really nice feature. Pop on that case. There it is. Oh man, it is gorgeous. Wow. And last but not least, we have to put on the Amiga CD32 Special Edition badge. I mean, wow, I mean, this thing is just amazing. I knew it was going to be great, <laughs> but I didn't quite realize it was going to be this beautiful. I mean, the case is just top, top notch quality. The A1200Net guys did not pay me to say that. <laughs> it really is. And this is really like the closest thing to having a brand new Amiga that, that I can think of. If you enjoyed this first episode and you want to see more of my adventures building my dream Amiga 1200, be sure to subscribe to the Guru Meditation and hit that bell notification icon. We'll see you on the next episode of the Guru Meditation.